Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and a little bit of an odd story. Diane Abbott, a senior member of the Labour Party, has had to apologise for having a little drink on public transport in London. Now, a fairly innocuous story, you might think, but in this increasingly divided society of ours, it actually stands out an example of where both sides are ruled by such passions that they end up getting their reaction badly wrong on both sides. Now, first of all, I need to point out that I didn't even know that this would be illegal. I'm not a resident of London and I don't use trains or other public transport very often, much less the London system. Now, I understand that drinking around town centres is often illegal, but they tend to be local bylaws. Perhaps this is the same sort of thing. I also have no moral objection to people drinking in public. After all, is cracking open a can of Marks and Spencer's mojito really worse than a load of pissed up Geordies dragging themselves onto the tube at night after a raz in the big smoke? But the latter is legal and the former is not, apparently. And I guess any laws about public drinking are probably made in mind to prevent people getting too steamed before it actually happens. In other words, taking the decision about how much is too much out of their hands. I don't know. However, the only sensible reaction to this whole situation was actually from Diana but herself, I have to say. She apologised for the incident. Didn't try and make light of it, just apologised and hopefully that would be the end of it. And quite right too, what else are you going to do? Yes, it may be a law that I think is, is silly, not really needed. After all, if the, if the problem with public drinking is getting too drunk, well, it's the drunken disorderly behaviour that is already illegal. Um, if it's that you're chucking the cans over your shoulder, well, then that's the littering that's illegal. Uh, there are already laws for that. But laws are still passed by democratically elected legislators and a senior parliamentarian such as herself should not be making light of the laws as indeed she did not. But the reactions on both sides have been quite extraordinary. She has been attacked by the usual people and media who are always out to get her. And, and this is where a bit of natural justice has stirred in me. Now, I personally feel that elected legislators should be whiter than white when it comes to matters of law. There is no law too small or petty to ignore. They create our laws, they should be bound by them, as indeed we all should be. But Diane Abbott must be one of the most poorly treated MPs by the media in this country. You expect some deplorable things to be said of Labour MPs in the right-wing press. Doesn't make it excusable, but you expect it. But I have lost count of the number of times the BBC have been told to apologise for their mistreatment of her. You know, whether it be a simple lack of basic civility on The Andrew Marr Show or calling out facts inaccurately on Newsnight. And, and, and so you get this sense of wanting to leap to her defence when yet another disproportionate attack has come her way. And perhaps this is me being not entirely objective on the matter either. I mean, if it were any other MP, I'd have been wagging my fingers at a legislator of all people breaking the law. For example, when Ed Balls, who, who used to be uh, a senior member of, of Labour in, in the Parliamentary Party, was convicted not once but twice of speeding, a far more dangerous offence, I never wanted him in Parliament again. I mean, I was sorry Labour lost the seat, but I didn't shed any tears for him when he was voted out of Westminster. And when MPs break what some consider to be petty laws, it's usually no more embarrassing for them. You know, even in, in the press of their opponents, they, they point the finger at them and then it's done with. But with Diane Abbott, there's always something deeply unpleasant about the attacks on her. And whether it's because she's female or black or unreasonable enough to be both, I really don't know. Yes, she's an idiot, uh, which is why I'm not in favour of her occupying senior positions in the shadow cabinet. She's very, very poor at political debates. But I'm not aware of anything morally objectionable to her words or her actions. And I find it offensive for people and the media who speak out in favour of the criminal Brexit campaigns and insist that we must do what those criminals want to be attacking a middle-aged lady for having a little libation on, on a bus or a train or whatever the hell. You know, I mean, I could understand it if she was popping can after can, elbowing people in the ribs, laughing raucously, whilst telling the most uh, uh, objectionable, offensive jokes known to man. And I also don't go with people on the other side who have been just as unreasonable. You know, those telling, oh, good on you for doing what she did. No, if it's illegal, it's illegal. It's not good on her, you know, or saying that there are far worse crimes. Well, I'm not really sure that's how it works in court. You know, if I wandered the streets of London and just picked out someone at random, I don't know, like Boris Johnson for a smack in the mouth, you know, there's, I can't really say to the judge, yeah, but you know, there's more serious crimes. Why are we wasting our time here? Just let me off, will you? You know, I don't think defence in courts hinges on getting your barrister to find a worse crime and therefore secure your acquittal. It's not really how it works.
but I can also understand the desire to leap to the defense of someone who has received such vitriol when she's done nothing as serious as, say, running illegal campaigns, making jokes about rape, dangerous driving, or lying to the public, for example. And if you think about it, if you look at the attacks she gets in the media, just think how the much more unhinged members of our society will be behaving. You know, we know that MPs, well, fortunately, we're shielded from as many times, get some very, very unpleasant uh, letters and things sent to them. Imagine just what she gets sent to her. It's, it's unreasonable. And, and, and then just when it couldn't get any stranger, this story, I thought that was it. You know, it's just demonstrating this polarisation. It turns out that the police officer who, who filmed this, who record, took a photo and reported it, a Detective Chief Inspector McNeville, is himself being investigated for anti-LGBT offences. Uh, the Independent Police Complaints Commission is investigating him over a number of Facebook posts, which seem to be more than a little offensive for a senior police officer to be making publicly. Way to draw attention to yourself there, Mick. He also seemed to like posting that promoting gay rights was like living in Nazi Germany. I'm not really sure that Nazi Germany was big on gay rights, but uh, I'm no historian. Um, but like I said at the start, you know, what, what's attracted me about this story is not the story in itself. It's the fact that it's just another indicator of how Britain is going to be for the foreseeable future. No matter what happens politically, Society itself is now so divided that whenever any issue comes up where one side attacks something, it's like the other side has to rush to the opposite pole. And that's what we do. You know, we, we're, we're rushing to one pole or the other. It's like there's no middle ground on some issues anymore. And, and, and as I say, no matter what happens, and this is why there are no good outcomes to Brexit or anything else that's going to happen in the next few years in British politics, we are so polarised, people are just going to run to those flags at the polls on any issue. And I, at the moment, see no end to it. I only see it getting worse. But anyway, you let me know what you think. Am I reading a little too much into it? And uh, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.